And I'm going to call the meeting to order uh, for the Clackamas County Library Service District Budget Committee. And we begin by introductions, I guess, of the Budget Committee, <laughs> or of us all. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. Uh, we'll start, all of us. Okay. Way down there. Go ahead. Jennifer Chambers, Budget Manager. Laurel Butman, Deputy County Administrator. Uh, Gary Schmidt, County Administrator. Bonnie Fisher, County Commissioner. Martha Schrader, County Commissioner. Nick Dirkman. Library Service District Budget Committee member. And Jim Bernard, Clackamas County Chair. Karen Morey, Library Service District Budget member. Ken Humberston, County Commissioner. Susan Nielsen, Library District uh, Budget Committee member and citizen. <laughs> Paul Savas, Clackamas County Commissioner. Krista Bosserman Wolf, Finance Director. Roxanne Fisher, Budget Coordinator. Jian Zhang, Budget Coordinator. Uh, the first uh, thing we need to do is to nominate a chair. Is there a nomination for the chair? I would nominate Karen Mori as chair. Second. Been moved and seconded that we nominate uh, Karen Mori to the chair position. Any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, here's the gavel. Thank you. All right, uh, now for nominations for secretary. I nominate Susan Nielsen. Second. Any others? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Susan, you are now the official secretary. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Interesting spelling of Susan. Yes, isn't it? That's my new age version. Mm. <laughs> like that. That's not helpful. <laughs> All I right. Think, I think we have and somebody who's dyslexic at the printer. <laughs> we are now to the budget message. Mr. Williams, would you like to present? Okay. Good morning, Chair Murray. Good morning, members of the budget committee. Uh, my name is Greg Williams. I am the Deputy Director of Clackamas County Business and Community Services. With me is Laura Zentner, the Director of Business and Community Services, and we are both very pleased to be here today to speak to you about the fiscal year 2019-2020 Library Service District Budget. Um, before we get started, I would also like to acknowledge and thank Tracy Grambush, our BCS Business and Community Services Financial Analyst, and Daniel Cloyd, our BCS Accounting Clerk Intern, for all their support and work preparing the budget for you today. So thank you, Danielle and Tracy. Okay. Oh, let's go back. Go back one more. So just a little bit of background on the Clackamas County Library Service District. The Library Service District was approved by voters in November of 2008. The ballot measure passed with a 61 to 39 percent margin passing in over 92% of precincts, 173 out of 187. So it was very uh, well supported. Uh, as part of passing the district, voters approved a permanent tax rate of 0.3974 for 1,000 of assessed value to provide a dedicated and stable funding source for the support of library services. The district currently encompasses all of Clackamas County with the exception of Johnson City. And the district's libraries cooperate under a framework outlined in the Library District Master Intergovernmental Agreement, or IGA. And this master IGA establishes um, the ways the district works, including the formula to distribute district funds, the library service area boundaries, the, it establishes the independence and autonomy of our member libraries, as well as expectations for cooperation between libraries. It outlines the role of the Library District Advisory Committee, the procedures and thresholds for amending the intergovernmental agreement, and also the service standards that all district libraries are uh, strive to achieve. So the libraries within the district are popularly known as the LINK cooperatives. LINK stands for Libraries in Clackamas County. There are currently 13 library locations throughout the district, and you can see them on the map here. Uh, these 13 locations are operated by 11 cities, as well as one location operated by Clackamas County. And our libraries regularly collaborate and cooperate to streamline practices and procedures, to enhance and implement services, and to achieve efficiencies. The county also operates and funds, via the county general fund, the library network office. 
Uh, this office provides the centralized services and support that allow our libraries to operate as a cooperative, um, which allows our libraries to operate as a cooperative, allowing them to share materials and to provide the 400,000 residents of the library district a more seamless, consistent experience no matter which link library they visit. Um, we also want to stress that libraries play an absolutely vital role in the life and the health of our community. We consider library services to be what we call preventive essential services. Not only are they essential to a community's well-being and health, we also <laughs> believe they can reduce the need for future uh, emergency services and future costs of emergency and other social services. So preventive essential services. So for fiscal year 1920, we are proposing a budget for the library district of approximately 22.2 million. The district's primary revenue source is the permanent tax rate, 3974 per thousand of assessed value. Uh, the district does not receive any support from the general fund. The district's primary expenditure category is special payments to district library service providers. Uh, and no district funds are used for administration or support of the library district or the central library network office. All funds collected by the district are used to support district libraries. So on this slide, we just have the main revenue sources. As you can see, the main revenue source is the um, $19 million in current year property taxes. There's also approximately $300,000 in other sources of funding, including delinquent taxes, interest and penalties, and other interest earned. On the expenditure side, uh, the primary budgeted expenditures include $19.4 million in distributions to district library service providers. There is also approximately $2.8 million budgeted um, as a other special payment. This is the amount that is currently held in reserve for the Oak Lodge Library. Um, according to the Master IGA, uh, to the extent that the annual distribution of funds to the Oak Lodge Library is greater than that library's annual operating need, those funds are held in trust by the district until such time as new library facilities will be constructed for the Oak Lodge Library service area. And once again, for fiscal year 1920, that amount held in reserve is approximately $2.8 million. On this slide, we just have the estimated distribution for fiscal year 1920. You can see we've got all the library service providers listed. Um, the annual distribution amounts are calculated using a distribution formula that is outlined by the Master Intergovernmental Agreement. That distribution formula has two components. We won't dig into the, the, the details here, but basically one component is based on the assessed value of properties within city limits for library service providers. The other component is based on the relative proportion of unincorporated populations served by each library. Um, the estimated distribution amounts are displayed above. These estimates were also provided to our library cities uh, in the early part of February to help them with their budgeting and their forecasting for the upcoming fiscal year. Financial trends, when we look at the library district, the main financial trend we look at are is revenue. Um, you can see on the slide, the assessor um, estimates the growth in property tax revenue for the next fiscal year to be approximately 4.5%. When we do our estimate, we don't do it that high. We are a little more conservative. We want to, we would much rather, um, we'd much rather have a more conservative estimate going out to cities since they rely so much on these estimates to plan their library budgets. Um, on the expenditures and FTE side, the district has no operating expenses, has no administrative expenses. It also has no FTE, no employees. Um, while these trends do not directly impact the library district, they are, of course, of great interest to our libraries. So. And finally, we'll briefly run through some accomplishments of the previous year. Uh, we provided our district libraries with their distribution estimates, allowing them to better manage and plan for their operations. Uh, business and community services, in partnership with county finance, prepared the annual budget, prepares any necessarily supplemental budgets and financial statements on behalf of the library district. We provide district libraries with timely distributions of their district funds. Our office, our department provides staff support to the library district advisory committee. We were very pleased that we hired a new library network manager this year, Catherine Cole. 
Uh, and finally, I just wanted to point out that our link library directors have been working over the past several months on the first ever link-wide strategic plan, um, which is intended to uh, kind of provide some direction and some imperatives for the cooperative as a whole. It's not meant to replace any local strategic planning efforts. It's more meant to augment that and to be able to help uh, us communicate what the goals of the district are. So we're very excited about that. And finally, some future uh, challenges or opportunities. Um, as many of you know, in October of 2017, the county and the city of Gladstone entered into a settlement agreement to settle some pending litigation regarding the construction of a new library in the Gladstone um, area to serve both the Gladstone and, and Oak Lodge library service um, areas. As part of that settlement agreement, the county agreed to construct and operate two new facilities. One will be a 6,000 square foot facility in the city of Gladstone on the current site of Gladstone City Hall. The other one will be an approximately 19,500 square foot facility somewhere within the Oak Lodge Library Service Area with the location to be determined after, um, you know, to be determined with a process, a robust public involvement process, um, <laughs> helping <laughs> that, help, helping to, to make that determination. Uh, so as we were implementing the settlement agreement uh, between the county and the city of Gladstone, there were several stakeholders who identified some concerns, some issues that the district was facing, some challenges. And in response to that feedback, the Board of County Commissioners um, directed staff um, to uh, make a proposal for a task force to address some of these issues. So staff have been working very closely with our library directors, with the Library District Advisory Committee to create that proposal. In May of this year, we took that proposal to the Board of County Commissioners and it was approved. So we are in the process of organizing and we'll be convening hopefully the early part of next fiscal year, our Library District Task Force, which will gather stakeholders from all library cities, all library service providers um, to kind of look at some of these issues and challenges that the, district, that the district is facing. And we anticipate it's going to focus on three areas, library services, what kind of services do our libraries need to provide to, to meet the needs of residents, library funding, how will we fund those services in a sustainable fashion going forward, and district governance, what if any changes might be needed to the master intergovernmental agreement to ensure that the district operates smoothly and efficiently. So that's a, a big opportunity for us, and we're quite looking forward to getting this task force up and running. So. With that, that is the end of our formal presentation. If there are any questions, we will be happy to, uh, to try to answer them. A uh, couple of quick questions on page seven. Page seven of the budget? Yes. Your revenue and expense. So I sh you show a reduction in delinquent taxes and interest and penalties property tax yes. of a total of $60,000. Uh, is that because people are paying their taxes or is it write-offs or I'm curious as to why you forecast that, that drop? It's primarily, and Tracy will, uh, will correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's primarily due to the Comcast settlement. So during the course of this year, the state of Oregon made a settlement with Comcast and there were delinquent taxes that were distributed to every taxing entity throughout the state, and so the library district did get a little bump up in those delinquent taxes, the one-time one time receipt, so those will not be repeated next year, so we adjusted our forecast downward. And then the Forest Products Reserve, uh, last year there was um, $19,142. This year you're not proposing any, and I, I'm curious as to why you didn't include in that as a change from prior year budget, which is 100% change. <coughs> That is a good catch. Actually, <clears throat> so on that, we actually have no idea whether it will come in. So some years it's zero, some years we have, yeah. we do receive funds. And so we, to be conservative, I believe, um, and Tracy can correct oh. me if I'm wrong, we just put zero. And then if we get it, it's a little extra money, which gets distributed to all the library cities. And the percent change, it was budget from budget. So it's it was budgeted at zero in 1819, budgeted at zero for 1920. So but just on the bookkeeping side, wouldn't you yeah. normally put in there that that's a $19,142 reduction from the year before, which shows as a 100% reduction, like you did in the in the delinquent taxes and the interest and penalties? I'm just, it's just a bookkeeping, bookkeeping question, not arguing with 
No, no, no. And, and, and I think it's, it's, it's that, that percentage change would be a change from the prior year budget. So again, on, on the 18, 19, uh, the budgeted amount for forest products reserve was zero. The actuals came in at 19. But I think that column is the, the, the change in from budget year to budget, from budget amount to budget amount, which is zero to zero, which ah, was zero. Okay, I connected it the so, wrong way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Chair Bernard. So uh, the 2.8 is the current balance. Uh, so until there's actually a library built, that balance will increase, correct? You want to go ahead? To the extent <laughs> that the annual operations, yes, that the annual operations are come in less than, the, the distribution is greater than the annual operational need, yes, that balance will continue to, that balance will continue to grow as they have, as the Oak Lodge Library has been doing more programming and doing, providing more services to, to, their citizens to the residents, I think that amount has been, the amount being held back has gone down every yeah, year. I hope that, that um, you know, they're making sure that they're pro the, the, it's a, a worthwhile to spend that money rather than to save that money. Now the Gladstone Library I've been to, uh, it's pretty small, <laughs> but they're not saving any money. They're not building up, a, or that wouldn't be in our budget anyway, would it? It'd be in theirs. Mm -hmm. So as far as we know, they could be saving money on that That's library. correct. Their budget is completely separate, and yeah, if they're saving true. something, they would be saving mm -hmm. it on their side, and we would not know about it unless we look at their budget. So the county uh, pays for links, right, or the library network? Correct, yes. I think it makes sense for transparency reasons, that it be included in this budget, that money goes, because the agreement was, I was there, I went, I was campaigning at the same time this was being considered, that the county would fund that the library network. It, all, it really should still be in that budget that way, so a transfer from the general fund, to, because when you say it, it sounds like the li the county's not doing anything for the library, but in fact, the library network is a it's not cheap. I think it really should be, and I hope that next when we talk about what we're going to do to address the shortfalls in, in the county in general, that should really be in there, your budget and reflected in the county's budget. Uh, for next year, because I think it's more transparent, and it does indicate that the county still is committed. Now we're also going to be running two more libraries, so I'm sure that that's also going to be included in your budget and should be reflected in the county's budget too. So, but could you actually right, address we, that? Yeah, it is. It is the, in your business the, and community in, services budget. Yes. Yeah, so the library network office is included in our business and community services budget, and so we presented last week yeah. and we talked about our library line of business. And one of those divisions is the library network office. So, and I can assure you that our libraries are very grateful and very appreciative of all the support the county provides. They. Well, I know the they, libraries. They, they could are. not. We, we we could not provide library service countywide without the support. Of the, I know the libraries are, but the citizens may not see the relationship. Right. And uh, anyway, that's that's all mine. To address that, um, we would probably have to look at the intergovernmental agreement to see if we would be able to change something like that because I believe that's what it's supposed to be just merely the money comes in the money goes out and it was never meant to be for operations and so that's why the library network is in the Clackamas County budget as well as the Gladstone library will be in there and the Oak Lodge library is also there but we can look and see okay. what it would take to change something like that because we are having the large task force where we will be yeah. addressing many things. Well, I haven't been in, as involved in a library district that maybe Paul has, but, and that's a question for the task force, but I think for transparency purposes, it would be better that way, at least to indicate it in some way besides just mentioning it. Okay. Commissioner Savas? Yeah. Um, earlier you mentioned the agreement. Uh, for the Gladstone Library and the <laughs> Oak Lodge Library. And um, I think last week um, it was mentioned by, I think, 
uh, Laura, that uh, there's revenues available for the Gladstone Library that could conceivably fund the debt service and build the library without any cash contribution. Is that correct? For the, for the Gladstone Library. The settlement agreement was written that way so that a portion of the distribution would be used for the debt service payment. And, but we would have to I issue revenue bonds, but the payment would come out of the actual distribution. Right. I was just, I was, my point was, or question was that ideally it's, there's no other cash contribution from other, other resources to augment that, to make that happen for the Gladstone piece. So assuming that's the case, um, and then recognizing the two million nine hundred some odd thousand or two hundred yeah nine hundred thousand that is it in the budget here identified, which will go for the Oak Lodge Library, which is even at today's well even at three years ago's cost of building a structure is woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. um, and so, where is that a responsibility of the district to mm -hmm. actually fund the the I mean. What, whose responsibility is that to make up the difference, and how would that be, how would that be funded for the for the balance of the construction cost for the Oak Lodge Library at nineteen thousand five hundred square feet? Well, and we do not know the numbers yet, and it'll be at least a year or two before we know exactly what the numbers are. Um, we will address that when we get to it, but I believe the settlement agreement is with Clackamas County, and um, that's not the district. Like, N not the district. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Fisher. On our shoulders. So I think it's interesting. I've been studying the what's, <clears throat> what's funded through business and community services, what's the library district, and we have all we have the network and the shared mm -hmm. services and all of that. So, but it seems like it would be a challenge to differentiate who does what, and I'm assuming that the money that goes to the libraries with the formula pays for some administration or pays for the administration of those individual libraries. I mean, I'm just curious, just for the, our viewing audience, how do you determine <laughs> what is funded through the district and what is funded through, I mean, I know it's operations, it's administration, and that's what the voters approve, right. but practically and functionally, What's the difference, and how do you determine <laughs> the bifurcation of the two? So, and is that a loaded question? I see the commissioner uh, straight up <laughs> over next to me. Yes. But it's just so interesting. So, so I could talk about this all day, but I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, so, we have individual IGAs with each individual library city, and in those IGAs, there is a bucket of services that is identified that the library network office will provide, and it it, it ranges from things like. Um, I'm trying to remember the exact wording, but it's the IT support, it's project management, it says things like administration, planning, and things like that. So um, generally the way when the rubber meets the road, the, the way it works out is we respect very, very much the independence and autonomy of our member libraries. They are city departments. We would never want to be seen as trying to dictate what kinds of services they are going to offer to their residents. However, we do have a very keen interest in ensuring that library patrons throughout the district have a uniform, high quality uh, experience when they come to libraries. And so a lot of it is there's just kind of discussions about what makes sense to do more centrally, what makes sense to do more at the local level, when it becomes you know, something that we are doing centrally, then we also talk about how we're going to fund that, how we're going to make sure that's sustainable going forward. So Do there's, the IJs there's... differ much across? No, they're, they're identical for each. each... So it, pretty, it is pretty much a fluid conversation of what, how to make this all work. Correct, okay. yes. Thank you. And I would say one of the things that we might end up discussing in the big task force is maybe putting a little more, you know, a little more uh, structure around that to mm -hmm. have some of those discussions. Thank so. you. Yeah, I just, just want to build on the conversation and say that um, of, all, of the meetings that I've been to um, with regard to the um, LDAC is that there is a concerted effort to make sure and we're ensure that the, that the district and what was in the bond, uh, the requirement for LDAC to do the reporting and everything is just what Greg said it was. Um, and actually this task force that we're appointing will even look at ways of enhancing it because there is a 
uh, as always, um, you know, a growing situation where the ex the uh, expenditures are outpacing revenues. So how do you maintain that level of service mm -hmm. with declining revenues, um, available revenues? So that's what they're looking at. That's what this task force that we're appointing will be looking at. Um, figure out how do we how do we tackle that? Make sure that we have good quality service throughout the county. Yeah, well, I love our libraries. Oh, well, good. Um, I know I didn't raise my hand, but it's interesting <laughs> because I feel totally comfortable, even though I live in Lake Oswego, to go to the different libraries. And I don't even think twice about, it's oh, fun. this isn't my library, but I thought the formula was interesting in that it anticipates what's the unincorporated. But really, it's well, kind of a community mm -hmm. of libraries, which I think is nice. With our mobile society, you can... You can get a book at one library and drop it off at another. And that's one of the, we, we pride ourselves providing that centralized service to enable that to happen, to allow these independent autonomous libraries to function as a, a seamless cooperative for patrons. So. All right. Aaron. Aaron. Oh, Nick. I just wanted to uh, add to what's been stated so far. I'm actually on the Library District Advisory Committee and also on the Oregon City um, Library Board. So. I, I kind of see it across all of the different areas that, that we're talking about today. And uh, I know that just from the information that we've gathered and doing, you know, comparing the financials across some of the libraries and what, in, you know, individual cities and libraries are doing, that it does vary you know, from city to city in terms of how the, how the funds are being used, how the... Um, um, you know, how the city's participating in doing some additional funding to the particular library. So I, you know, I think that, um, you know, I think every, I, from the funding standpoint, I think it, it works, it works well. And I think you do need the independence within the, <coughs> the you know, the cities or the libraries actually, you know, work through that in terms of what's going to work best for them. Because everyone's at a different pl place in time in terms of their buildings, their, um, you know, it, it, it really varies a lot from city to city. So, you know, you, to come up with something that would be standard, I know that from the service standpoint, and I know that those are in the um, IGA, that th those make, you know, those make sense. And I, with the task force, I think that, you know, that discussion um, should be interesting in terms of what, what really happens. But I just wanted to, and, and the central services the, that are provided, um, you know, are, it would be impossible to do what we mm -hmm. what happens in the uh, <clears throat> across the libraries without that service, um, particularly with the distribution of uh, materials and that type of thing. It's it's huge. It, it wouldn't. I I don't know how it was done. I mean, I, it would be impossible to do it without that. So just wanted to recognize the services that come from the central area are definitely appreciated within the libraries. Well, and I think one point of clarification that I haven't heard yet, <clears throat> this budget is bound by what the voters passed. Mm -hmm. So all of the administrative costs, the reason they're not in here is because mm -hmm. we didn't vote for them. Um, although I agree, a supplemental page would be helpful. All right, any other comments? Uh, hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you. And the public hearing is now open. Is there anyone here to speak on this budget? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, all right, and we are ready for a motion to approve the budget. Madam Chairman, I move to approve the budget as presented. No, you, you can't it. do it that way. Oh, we can't do <laughs> it. Gotta read the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> Everybody, every year, oh, tries. <laughs> all right, I move that the committee approve the 2019 2020 budget in the amount of $22,291,875 for the Clackamas County Library Service District as presented and impose the district's maximum permanent tax rate of $0.3974 per 1,000 of assessed value within district boundaries. Is there a second? Second. Um, any questions? Discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That passes. Any further business? <laughs> Thank you. I declare this hearing closed.